Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Chrome Soft Golf Ball from Callaway. And hi again, everyone. I am Jimmy Roberts, and this is your Golf Central update. PGA Tour in Mexico this week. Originally an alternate event, the Worldwide Technologies Championship at Mayakoba has been a primary event since 2014, held at El Chameleon Golf Club on the Yucatan Peninsula. Harris English, Matt Kuchar, and most recently, Victor Hovland among the winners. And Hovland will try to win it for the third straight year. World number two, Scotty Scheffler, is the field's highest ranked player. Colin Morikawa at number nine is also set to go. Tony Finau will be making his season debut, coming off a year with two wins. Billy Horschel, Jason Day, and Justin Rose all in the field this week as well. Well, there's a lot on the line this week in Savannah as hopeful Corn Ferry Tour members participate in the final stage of Tour Q School. This is the last year in which the event will provide only Corn Ferry Tour status. Beginning next year, the top five finishers and ties will earn PGA Tour status. Well, qualifying, whether it's a week or just a Monday, is its own very compelling world. And our next guest here on Golf Central has carved out a unique niche following it all. He's a great follow on Twitter as Monday Q, also a contributor to the Fire Pit Collective. Ryan French joins us now. Hi, Ryan. Big fan of what you do. What was the, the genesis of Monday Q? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll try to keep it short, Jimmy, but uh, yeah, five years ago, our son had brain surgery. I've always been a golf nerd my whole life. My dad and I had uh, caddied on many tours as a, a guy's trip. Uh, and um, when my son had brain surgery, I started an account to kind of tell some stories behind the scenes and uh, never expected it to be this thing. Things like this are very surreal, being on Golf Channel with yourself. Um, but I think it's an important part of what golf is. I think a lot of people see the top players in the world uh, playing and, and cashing big checks and those kind of things. And, uh, and probably 90% or more of pro golfers live a life of kind of paycheck to paycheck. Corn Ferry Q School finals coming up this week. Uh, how about some of the stories you've been watching? Yeah. Uh, I mean, some of my favorites, you know, I, I love – Q school from the standpoint of it's just a mixture of things that uh, kind of epitomize what qualifying is. There's a lot of veterans at Q school. Wesley Bryant's there, Jim Canals, uh, Grayson Murray, assuming that he is um, healthy enough to go. And then young guys coming up and uh, a mixture of guys who have been there forever uh, on the grind and uh, now have a chance to break through. One of my favorite stories is Brady Calkins. Brady's kind of referred to, I wrote a story about him called the um, uh, the, uh, Bra the John Daly of mini tours. Mm -hmm. Kind of out there grinding his uh, butt out, partying hard, uh, set a course record uh, after drinking most of the night. Um, he's just kind of a very honest person of who he is. I love that about the guys that I cover. And um, he finally got a breakthrough. He's dominated the Dakotas tour, mini tour up in in the Dakotas for a long time, and now is, is getting his chance to be on the big stage. He qualified for a U.S. Open. He's just a really good, honest dude that um, a lot of people can relate to. Yeah, you know, the numbers don't always tell the entire story of sports. It's the stories behind the stories that are sometimes much more interesting. And we've talked about this a little bit already today. The PGA Tour fall schedule going to change. Not exactly sure 100% how, but uh, how do you see that changing the world that you cover? Yeah, it'll be very interesting, Jimmy, to see what happens to the fall schedule. I think, you know, I've heard like a ranking priority tournaments, those kind of things. Um, but it's kind of that right now anyway, Jimmy. Um, you know, the fall schedule is vital for guys that have graduated off the Corn Ferry Tour or via the Corn Ferry Finals. These are important weeks. Um, and and it's a chance for guys to to change their career, I think. Uh, Seamus Power is a great example of what can happen with some opportunities. Uh, I told this uh, in a tweet yet the other day. Um, less than 18 months ago, I was talking to Seamus on the Monday on the uh, on the uh, range at the Honda Monday qualifier, and uh, he was like, "I just want to get 15 starts and get a year towards my pension." Mm -hmm. He now has two wins, 
uh, another trip to the Masters coming up, and he's going to be a top 30 in the world. I think it just the fall will continue to be um, a vital to guys that are trying to make their way to the top top parts of the tour. Yeah, you know, you mentioned it, Seamus Power. What a journey for him. Two years ago, he was in the 400s in terms of official world golf ranking. Now he's in the top 35 or so. You know, it seems that uh, a lot of the content that you tell your followers about highlights not only the extraordinary but the unusual. And sometimes I think it's safe to say the outrageous. Um, is there a story or two that comes to mind that you think is particularly memorable? Yeah, the qualifying world is is a wild place. Um, I just wrote a story about a guy. So without getting too deep into it, uh, uh, the PGA Tour has a pre-qualifying stage exactly for the reason mm -hmm. I'm about to tell. But um, if you click pro on the entry form, then there's no handicap requirement. So every once in a while, you'll see a, a, a crazy score. And um, I got a message from a, a follower of mine who's a pro and said, I played with a guy in the pre-qualifier today um, for the Bur uh, Bermuda event, and he shot 135. And then he sent me a picture of his scorecard, and it was uh, the two holes back-to-back -back were two and then a 17. And on the, uh, on the, on the two, uh, we think that it's his first birdie ever in golf. It was a 230-yard one yard par three. He hit a driver to a foot and a half, made it, and celebrated as if it was his first uh first birdie ever in his life, and then proceeded to go to the next hole, whiff three times, lose two balls, and make what a set is really a 17, or was marked down as a 17, uh, but he ended up hitting the wrong ball, and the players in the group just didn't have the heart to tell him, so he probably made about a 22 or 23, so uh, maybe the greatest back-to-back uh, -back holes in uh, qualifying history, a two and then a 17. Um, it, it's, it's what I love, the the great stories, but the wild stories are also a part of what, of what I cover. Yeah, those are the exceptions to the rule in terms of players and their, their abilities. I think more of uh, the types of things that we're used to seeing on, on your site and uh, under your handle are the amazing occurrences that, that happen on just a weekly basis out there in these Monday qualifiers and in Q School. Yeah, I think, uh, I think people have a, such a... a hard understanding to to realize the line, Jimmy, between players that are playing at uh, Monday qualifiers and the players that are playing on the PGA Tour. Uh, I say often that if you give a player uh, a card, a good Monday qualifier, a PGA Tour card, he's going to keep it. Uh, Seamus is a, is a great example, but there's many, uh, many, uh, you know, examples of that, of people who have changed their career in one Monday. Russell Knox couldn't get through Q School for multiple years. Uh, Monday changed his career. Doc Redman, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, obviously, Patrick Reed started at, at Mondays. Um, the talent at Monday qualifiers is, is just a razor thin line to the players that are playing consistently on the PGA Tour. Um, I think if, if you, if I tell people all the time, if you have the opportunity to go to a Monday, go, it's a great fan experience and also It'll give you great insight into how great the players that are playing out there are. Yeah, I always say it. Golf is a great and terrible game all at the same time. Ryan French, you can find his content on Twitter at Monday Q, also at the Fire Pit Collective. Ryan, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me on, Jimmy.